Hi, you're again with Volleyball Explained and uh, our podcast First Tempo. Today, I'm very happy to welcome as our guest uh, Jan Zimmermann, the setter of the German national team and the team of uh, Padova. Jan, thank you very much for, for being here. Hi, and thanks for the invitation. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, just for a start, can you tell us uh, actually how your career started and how did you choose uh, volleyball? Because we all, we all know, know that uh, actually in Germany, volleyball is for sure not even the second uh, most popular sport, taking into account that, of course, football is the first. Uh, yeah, as you said, football is the first. So also I started with, with uh, soccer uh, when I was really young. But all my family played always volleyball and uh, especially my mom. She always wanted me to try it at least because one of her good friends, who is also one of my good friends right now, even if he's a little bit older, uh, he was a coach and he was also a coach of the first division team. And he was always pushing me to come one time uh, just to try out. And in the end, I went one time and I never left again because everything went really good. And I had some talent, I guess. And uh Yeah, if you if you win, especially if you're young, it's like yeah, it's it's nice and you continue. Yeah, yeah, for sure you have talents, but uh, uh, as as I mentioned, other sports. Uh, do, do do you think that actually? Let's start from the beginning. Uh, where do you think is volleyball placed in terms of popularity in Germany? Because we we said uh, football is first, but basketball probably handball also. Yeah, we have uh, handball, basketball, especially handball is one of the the most yeah popular sports, I guess, because the league is one of the best in in Europe for sure. Um, also basketball, the basketball league is is strong, and also ice hockey actually. Like there are three leagues which are which are pretty popular, and there also there is a lot of money inside. Um, especially in terms of marketing, I think they made a really good good job. Of, especially the basketball league in the last years. So we are actually probably in sport number five, four, five, something like this. And um, so the yeah, it's not so easy at the moment for the volley volleyball league in in general because. After the COVID situation, there's also less money than before. But there are, as you see, Berlin, for example, there are one, two really good good teams still, and they they also play good in the Champions League. So, yeah, they are trying to get back, which is not so easy. Yeah, and they will play in the in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And is there any other sport you like, for example, practicing or just watching? Well, I. I played soccer and I really liked it when I was when I was young. At the moment, I'm not following. I like to play it still. Also, before yeah. the games, I always play a little bit of soccer, but um, I don't follow it so much. Uh, I started to follow a lot more basketball because I have two good friends which are playing. Uh, one stopped now; the other one is still playing. So yeah, I'm more into basketball. I like to play every kind of sports with like with a ball in the end. Um, and I also like to change in the summer to play something else. I tried paddle. I tried. I played tennis myself when I was younger. Um, I like basketball. Like as soon as soon as there is a ball, I'm in normally. <laughs> yeah, uh, and um, yeah, let's start in in volleyball on the substance uh, now. Uh, how do you develop a working relation with the spikers, and how much time do you need in order to uh, to to adjust to what they need and for them to adjust to you. And for for example, you, you are playing now with Linus Weber, both in the national team and and in uh, Padova. And uh, I'm sure that that helps a lot. Yes, for sure. I know Linus for some time. Uh, it helps us a lot. That's, that's for sure. And he's also really confident with me, which helps the team in the end because the opposite is one one really important spiker for, for my team. So that's something really positive, I think, for, for Padova, for me, for him. So it's it's something which which helped us through all this season. But in, in general, I think the older you get, the less time it, it takes because 
spikers are different, but there's always some similarities, I guess. This season, for example, with Lubke, he's really similar to shot in the end in the national team. It's still a little bit of difference in, in the ball they need, but they are pretty similar. And then there, there are other players, for example, Botolo needs more a ball like Caliberda. There are also yeah, middle blockers, which are always a little bit have the same style. So the more time you, you play with, with different kind of players, the less time it takes. This year, especially in the beginning, I think we, we found each other pretty fast. Um, which which was also good work from the spikers, but I think also that that I'm not a difficult setter to play with because I always try to help him. I'm I'm talking a lot, so that helped us in the beginning and helps me always uh, to adjust quite quickly. And yeah, of, of course, experience uh, matters a lot. But how did you cope with with? players spikers who are complaining that this ball is slow this ball is short this ball is long there's always a limit you know <laughs> uh, if the, if they tell me okay in the beginning especially if they talk to me it's no problem but after a while if they're complaining all the time then yeah i make sure that that they understand that they also have a job to do it's not that they they give me the receptions always on the on this in the same point so I think it's it's more a work that that has to come from both sides. I try to adjust a lot, and I'm seriously, or I'm quite sure that I'm not a not a setter, which is which is not hearing you out. But in the end, I think uh, there's always a limit. If they if they exaggerate, um, then I will, I will tell them also, okay, look, this is the ball you get, or you spike it, or you don't. But try to help me also. Yeah, there is there is no a weak uh, set. There is also only a weak uh, spiker. Yeah, <laughs> let's say it in this way. Yeah. Um, and how actually did you take your decisions? Of course, the tactics work. The but yeah, there there are also other factors. Like for example, uh, the result at the moment, the the shape of the attackers, the form of the attackers, you can rely on in at a given moment. The blockers on the other side, which is for you the most important factor and actually if i can rephrase also the question there are some coaches which are uh, more into giving freedom to the setter uh, and there are others who are giving more concrete instructions uh which is which is your style of, of these i think it always has to be a mix um and I think the more the game is going on, you have to feel also your team, like the strength of your team, but also the the moment of a spiker. Um, it's not always easy to find a good mix, um, especially now here in Italy. The tactics are are like really, and the blockers the level is really high. Um, so I think it's always a mix. I think it's a good idea to start the game in a tactical kind of way. So you play against blockers, you play a little bit with the with an idea of the game, because in the end, on this level, all the spikers can spike. It's not a problem. But there's always a better day for one spiker and a better day for another spiker. So I think during the game, you have to really feel who is on fire, who is, who is making the important points and who has the courage to, to to take also responsibility in the important moments. And uh, this can change from game to game. There's, there were also seasons that it's always the same guy, but there's all, there are also seasons. For example, this year we have a really young team. It's, it's a little bit different. We, we try to, or I try to, to find always the, the guy who is on fire in, in the important moments. Yep, and, and uh, because I mentioned uh, coach uh some some minutes ago uh which is the most who is the most uh, influential coach in your career let's say so far influential on on tactics or on technique it could be both for example it could be it could be more than one for example one in your uh career as a, as a young player and one uh, later in your men, men's career uh, already as a professional player? 
I think they're different. Yeah. Yeah. Different types of coaches, which, which helped me a lot. I have to say the coach I had the first, and I'm also still a friend of his. He influenced me a lot on going the right way, taking the right decisions um, to get a professional player. He pushed me always on a, like on a mental level to, to get professional. And he was a really important, uh, really important point in, or a really important guy in my, or coach in my career. Um, and then there are different, I think all the coaches I had, they gave me something. For example, my first two professional years in Friedrich Saab, I had Mokulescu, which was a great coach, where I also played with a lot of Bulgarians, uh, especially te technically and how he was working and how he was pushing me was, was really important to start my career, also for the years after. Now here, I, I have one, like our, our main coach, uh, Jacopo, is doing a really great job on... Uh, on a tactical level, I think, um, and also giving enough freedom, which is important, I guess, or I feel it's important for me. But we also have a, have a, have a coach here who is only working with setters who nobody sees. And I think technically he's doing a really, really great job. And I could do like good improvements here, but also John, John Joe, Andrea Gianni, he, he made like, he made me make a big, uh, a big step in my career. Vital Heinen was a good coach on tech, on, on really tactical level. Um, but I think these are the, the most influential coaches I had, but all on different levels and all in different ways. So I think it's important even for young players to, to take always something from each coach because in one, in one point they can always help you. Yeah, uh, and maybe three or four. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's normal because uh, every person can can give you something different from the other, and you can just uh, just gather these uh, these new new skills and uh, and advice from from different people. Uh, because you mentioned uh, Vito Heinen, uh, how is the how is the Heinen's approach different? Because uh, you were under under uh, the charge of him uh, in both the national team and also the last the last season in uh, in Perugia, because we we know that he's a little bit different than other coaches. In, in, not only mentality, I think. For sure, he's different. But his focus for me, when I reflect on on the years and the coaches I had, is way more in, on, in a tactical way and when I came to him was the focus was always on not doing too many mistakes like always managing the game for everybody not only for setters but also taking right decisions and feeling the game also a little bit you when you have to risk when you have to risk less and when sometimes you also have to make the other team play because you're you're doing good and they are in difficult uh, in difficult moments um yeah and then his his approach or how he's how he's talking to players how he's managing the team is 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 special and as i said especially in tactical in tactical preparation yeah and now he's going to to be in charge of the germans but the women's national national team and uh, why do you think that the things with him didn't didn't go that that well at the at the end of the the last season in Perugia, because uh, we all know that there was some some problems. For example, Atanasievich didn't uh, didn't play, and uh, then another another opposite uh, came. How do you how do you feel this, this situation? You personally? Well, I think, as you said, it's a really dif really difficult. It was a really difficult situation for for him in the end with the team. You're you're in a team with a lot of big characters, which are sometimes, yeah. If you have a lot of big characters, a lot of big players, it's not so easy to manage them all the time. And yeah, the situation with Atan Atanasievich was was really special in the end. We yeah we didn't we didn't find a way to integrate our our op 
opposites or he didn't find the way uh, in the way we needed because in the end we were we were counting on Atanasievich and I think they they didn't find a way or he didn't find a way to make him play uh, as he can or as he did before and that made that made all the situation in the team also not so easy so uh, as you know he's a he was an important player for Perugia and he's yeah they all called him the king of Perugia and if this relationship is not working I think it's not easy for a coach um, but also with the team there were some some internal problems which uh, yeah I would say I it's difficult to talk about it in, in yeah. public yeah of course that's uh, that's could, pretty normal you could, you could see I think also outside that not all the things were going so good yeah, for sure, for sure. Of course, I'm not going to to ask more, but uh, but we all know that uh, yeah, some some things were not working in the best possible way. But let's finish this topic with Perugia. With uh, what makes Vilfredo Leon that special? There are different things. Um, first of all, and that's I think special for a player or for maybe the play for me the best player in the world yeah. um he's really human eh? like he's not let's say he's not feeling himself better than anybody else and he makes you feel for me for example as a second setter he, in peru which i was he made me feel still an important player for the team and he understood that everybody has his role and everybody is important for a team to, to win something. And on a, on a human level, he's, he's amazing. He's never arrogant. He knows that he's a really, really good player and he knows maybe that he's the best player in the world, but he shows everybody that he needs him to play as good as he can. And then we don't have to talk about his jump, his serve. And I think the best thing he has is his shoulder. Like even if he's not jumping maximum, he's, his arm is so fast. And uh, yeah, I think there is not a better spiker than him existing at the moment. That's my opinion. Maybe it's, it's also subject, subjective, but he's... He's a, a something else. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and let's go a little bit back because you mentioned that you have played with with Bulgarians in Friedrichshafen, but you you haven't played only there with Bulgarians. You played also with uh, Alex Grozdanov in uh, in uh, Masek, and now he, you're he playing with my, my favorite Bulgarian. He's, he will always be my favorite Bulgarian <laughs> because he he ma he made me make a championship. 14-13 in the fifth set in <laughs> Belgium, so he's he's number one. Yeah, can you can can you tell us uh, that story about about being a champion with uh, with the last point I believe spy uh, attack by yeah, yeah. by Alex. Yeah, we was it was uh, rotation one, so I was I was in one and uh, it was 14-13 for us in the tie break in the last game of the championship, and I saw Alex; he was playing good. And I told him before, I will give you this ball, don't worry. And he spiked as strong as he can. We won the championship. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a, a really nice moment. And I will remember him for this all the time. Yeah, and you played with, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but with uh, Svetoslav Gotsev in Friedrichshafen, Viktor Josifov and Valo Bratov. Yeah, um, and also... Yeah. I, I consider Simeonov also as a Bulgarian. Yeah, yeah, Simo yeah Simeonov also. Yeah, uh, all, all, all four that time or, or, or on uh, at the same time, time in Friedrichshafen or not? Because... My first professional season, I played with all four of them. Yeah, yeah. And but... they were all at this moment. They, I think three, I think three of them or all four of them came from Italy, so they were way more experienced. They were good players and. And uh, strong characters for sure. Yeah, uh, and because you mentioned uh, uh, something additional to to what I have prepared uh, 
uh, in advance. But because you mentioned po position, uh, you were in position one in this in this situation with Alex finishing the the championship in Belgium. But can you tell us this this problem with the setter in rotation one in position one uh, from the from your perspective? How is, how is different because. Uh, commentators are always talking about this is the most problematic position because uh, because uh, the, the the spikers in in two and four uh, swapped and uh, and not playing in their traditional positions. Well, I think they're that's the most difficult thing because they are not comfortable, not as normally, not as comfortable. Let's not talk about Rosar yesterday because he's really comfortable in two, <laughs> but most most of the time they are. Uh, <clears throat> they are not as comfortable as at, in their position. Then you still have the problem with the first, like the first tempo is not a problem, but the pipe sometimes can be a problem because the pipe spike is coming from position five. So the, the mix up is, is a little bit difficult uh, in, in general. Um, it depends always on a team. I had years which P1 was never a problem. Sometimes it was our best rotation. And sometimes you're you're in difficult times. It depends always a little bit also your opposite. It depends your spiker, how comfortable he's in too. But that's like for me the most the, or the biggest problem in the end. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's finish our conversation with, with the Padova topic. You started very, I would say we started the, the season great. You beat uh, you beat Trento in Pala Trento 3-2. In the in the in the uh, in the Andata and uh, but then things go a little bit worse. Why do you think is the reason? And do you believe that also COVID has influence on that? Because there were a lot of uh, a lot of matches postponed and just your probably not your only rhythm, but also the rhythm of the of the other teams uh, get worse. Well, let's say we were. I think we were playing good in the beginning. And also yesterday, I think we didn't play bad, for example. The thing is that in the beginning of the season, they didn't expect us to be so strong. We were a young team. We were wild. We were, we were, we were going. We were never giving up. And we still don't. But I think teams are growing. And if you take player by player, the other teams are stronger than us. If we, if, yeah. if we watch, for example, Piacenza, we won, we won here 3-2 at home. On the other side, there's one Olympic champion. There's Russell, who is playing on this level, was champion in Italy. There's Rosar, he was, play, he was one of the best receivers last season. There's Holt. So these are teams which are, if you take player by player, they are really strong. And we were, we were especially serving really, really good in the beginning of the season. We are still serving good, but they, they find a level, they find also together. And I think for sure COVID didn't help us. So it broke a little bit our rhythm because before we won at home against Latina, which were also two important points for us. And also if you take Latina, if you take player by player, they're way more experienced. I think we were growing and we are still growing a lot in this season, but this is the, the young, yeah, we have a really young team and this is the, for me, best championship in the world. Uh, if you take the players which are here individually, this championship is, yeah, it's just really strong. And we, we try to keep up, we try to take our points, but it's more normal to lose against these teams than to take points against this team. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're, very, uh, you're really a very young team. And my last question in, in this regard about, about the youth of this team is uh, you've played, yeah, you're, you're more experienced than, than, than many players in the team and you played in a top four team, as we mentioned in Perugia. Uh, do you think that there is, a, and there is a player in your team in terms of the, youth, the young players? For example, there are rumors that Boto can play uh, in Lube in, in, in season or two. Do you believe that some of some of them or uh, any of them is is uh, already already ready to to play in a in a top four team like Lube, Trento, Perugia, Modena? I think at the moment to play starting six in a team like this, there's nobody ready. I think they can get there, and I think they are not so far. But to play starting six under pressure on this level. 
is something different. And I saw, if you see also the top teams, there are not so many players really young, which are always playing. If you, there are some, but they're exceptional. If you take Micheletto, he was the best player for me in European Championship, even if the final he didn't play as well as before, but he was 19 or 20 years old and he was playing amazing. Also last season he was playing, he was growing so fast. He's an ex exception. It's not normal to play on this level on with 22 or 21 years old. I think Linus can can arrive on this level, but he needs one or two seasons to be to to get there. Maybe he needs four, but I'm pretty sure that that there are some players, especially I think Botolo and and Linus uh, Weber, who who can get there, and I hope for them they will. I try to push them uh, on on their maximum uh, every day, so. Um, I hope they can be, or they will be. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you again for being in the podcast, and I wish you a lot of uh, a lot of luck and success in the next matches because you are you in the fight for the for the playoff uh, for the playoff spot for the eighth place. It's very it will be very difficult because five five teams were are, are in the are in the mix. You and uh, Verona with Latina with Taranto and. Uh, and uh, Vibo, so it will be very, very interesting. And I hope that you are going to, to have uh, success in the end. Uh, and of course, thank you, uh, thank you again for uh, for uh, for accepting the invitation to to be a guest in the podcast. Thank you, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I hope I could tell you something about my uh, my volleyball and my my life, and I hope you enjoy yeah. it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that the, the spectators or the listeners uh, enjoyed it and uh, yeah, thank, thanks again and, uh, and I hope that uh, you, can, uh, you can get to this, to this playoff spot and of course to, to, in first place to, 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 play, to play better and to, and to, and to have success. Uh, thank you again. Uh, thanks also to the listeners or to the spectators for watching or for listening to, to this podcast. Uh, uh, to the interesting stories uh, Jan, Jan told us. And of course, uh, I hope that you're going to do it also the next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.